Hey guys! Uh, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. Um, believe me, this is not the way that I wanted to come back. You know, I've been working on uh, a lot of videos that I just kind of ended up leaving half finished. And I, I wish I was uploading one of those instead. Uh, but something's been on my mind for months. And uh, it, it's made it really hard to focus on anything else. And so I just kept getting more and more anxious and locking up and not getting anything done. Um, and I think... I think it was made worse because I felt like I was alone. You know? Like, like, YouTubers don't really talk about this. And I was worried that none of you would want to hear it. But... My whole goal with this channel is to try and form actual connections with people through the medium talking about what we actually care about. So I'd feel awful if I was dishonest and didn't share this. So here we go. Um, we need to talk about Burnout. Burnout 3 Takedown was one of my favorite games in my early teenage years. I played it whenever I could at my friend's house, and even though I never really owned it myself, I still randomly think about it over a decade later, because it's one of those games that was truly unique. You know, nobody has bothered filling that hole since. That's what she said. <laughs> they recently re-released Burnout Paradise for its fourth anniversary, uh, tenth anniversary. Sorry, I'm an idiot. While it's great that a new generation gets to experience one of the forgotten gems of that era, why is it a forgotten gem? Why isn't it a popular series with a new game every two or three years? Because the developers got pulled off to work for, for Need for Speed, which isn't really all that controversial. Burnout left just as much of an impression as Sorry for the Cunnilingus or Metajokes Common when it came to defining the PlayStation 2 experience for me as a child in the 2000s. There's so much more they could have done with the series, and I would have loved to have seen it continue to build. So, instead of doing something actually supportive, I thought I would just yell at you guys about it. <laughs> now, Burnout was far from the only racing game on the market, but it defied conventions in a way that made it stand out from racing standbys like, say, Need for Speed. As the series grew, Criterion started leaning more and more away from the usual racing game mechanics of, you know, making clean churns and passing your opponents, and started focusing more on rewarding players for things like driving head-on into traffic and making the other drivers die. My favorite thing that the series ever did, without question, was Crash Mode. You know, it used the game's mechanics to make this sort of physics puzzle game, and while it's kind of hard to explain verbally, it instantly makes sense in action. But you get a car, you throw it at some stuff, you make it explode, and you hope that its burning tireless carcass levels the entire city like Satan's Rube Goldberg machine. The amount of actual variety that Burnout Revenge's crash mode gives you in scenarios and objectives is truly impressive. You know, it's not just a Destruction Derby sandbox. However, it was a Destruction Derby sandbox, and that is initially what made it appeal to me, my friends, and our extremely weak grasp on masculinity. It's like chess, but you only have a queen, and the queen's also a bomb. The only other game I can think of that blends the methodical and the chaotic like this is Katamari Damashi, but that's a baby game. Burnout Paradise, the game that was just re-released, was the last entry in the series because uh, Burnout Crash never happened. It was incredibly ambitious. You know, it pushed an open world in a time where that wasn't the norm. And, you know, if the idea of an open world that combines the mechanics that I just described, uh, if that sounds a bit weird to you, yeah, it kind of was. <laughs> uh, climbing the watchtowers to fill in the map was awkward. In all seriousness, or at least, like, a fair amount of it. While it's no takedown, Paradise is actually a great game, and if you never got to play it, you should take a look at the remaster. They changed the mechanics a bit to, to fit the open world, and it's still a really good time. There's no more crash mode uh, anymore, now it's just called SHOWTIME! And you can activate it at any time or place. It's fun, but it's less like chess and more like destruction parkour. Which is still really badass. I guess all I'm trying to say is that I love Burnout. And maybe you will too. And hey, if you already love Burnout, welcome home. Please pay rent.
There actually is a spiritual successor to Burnout uh, called Dangerous Driving. Some of the developers got together and made a small indie studio. Uh, Dangerous Driving is much smaller in scope. You know, it's a small team, small budget, but they're basically trying to show that there is interest and that a, a game in the style of Burnout can still be successful so they can get funding to do a bigger, true successor to Burnout. And the driving is still really, really fun. It's not as fully featured, but it feels so good. I just found out about it while doing research for this video, so I, I, I don't know how this managed to slip by. Why haven't we heard about this? Hey everybody, I know it has unironically been a very long time since I've uploaded, but I just wanted to get this fun, kind of silly uh, upload out there. W one, just to, to, to make something and talk about a game series I like, but also to experiment with some new stuff I can do. I've also been spending a lot of my time recently working on this D&D show we've been making. And this week we're doing like a Redwall themed Thanksgiving special that I'm DMing. I'm really excited. You can find us at Natural Ones over on Twitch. Uh, there's a link to the YouTube channel here where you can find more info. Thank you for watching, and I'll actually see you very soon with the next video.